Good morning, scholars. Happy Wednesday. Welcome back to another day of guided reading with Miss Frosty. Say woohoo. Say woohoo. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, I have a first. I want to start out with some shout outs. Shout out to so many friends and so many new names on our videos today. Nice job. I want to give a quick shout out for doing their work, for commenting their names at the bottom of this video on Google Classroom and for working so hard. Shout out to Zoe White, Caden Patterson, Raul, Jordan, Makai. Shout out to Ava and Charles and Brooklyn Chambers and Cameron Williams. Shout out to Troy. Skylar March, shout out to Faith, Sean, and Morgan. Shout out to Miss Kamaya, Alana, Ella. Shout out to Elizabeth, Rashawn, Aiden, and Derek. Nice job. If your name is on this list, give yourself two steps and two more. If you watched the video yesterday but you didn't comment your name, I still want you to give yourself two claps. And then today, don't forget to comment your name so I know that you watched the video and grew your brain. Nice job to these friends. So much responsibility. Okay, we're going to talk about making inferences. Today, we're going to make inferences. We're going to make, yes, and you should already know what two things you need to make an inference. So pause your video and tell me what two things you need to make an inference now. All right, you should be experts at this. Your hands should have been up and you should have been, you should have said text evidence and schema. We need text evidence and schema. We need, good, and schema is what you know. Schema is, so schema is what you know about something. So today we're going to read a book that you already probably know. So you're going to be using a lot of schema to think about the things that you know about this book. We have a sentence stem that we use to help us answer inferential questions. The first the sentence stem that we are going to use is on this screen. On this screen, excuse me. And of course, you're going to be using this sentence stem when you're answering questions using your text evidence and your schema. So let's say our sentence stem all together. Take your finger and put it underneath the word in. We're reading the sentence stem together on two, one, two. In the story, I read blank. So that makes me think blank. Nice job. If you did not have your hands up, I want you to pause the video and do it with your hands up. Nice job. Excuse me, friends. Let's go ahead to our next strategy for today. We are going to talk about character traits. Now, this is like the sixth or seventh day that we've talked about character traits and I think some of us know and some of us don't really know. So I want you to pause your video and I want you to say out loud, a character trait is blank. A character trait is what? Look at your screen to help you pause your video and tell me what a character trait is. Go ahead and do that now. I know that some of you were doing what Mr. Rossi does and I'm sure some of you were like, a character trait is what a character is like. A character trait is what a character is like. Say it with me. A character trait is what a character is like. Good. One more time. A character trait is what a character is like. Ooh, what a character is like. Nice job. Let's read our character trait sentence stem. It is the same sentence stem that we use when we answer inferential questions. Because the author might not tell you a character's trait, you might have to guess or infer what that trait is. So let's go ahead and read our sentence stem all together on two, one, two. In the story, I read blank. Ooh, good text evidence. So that makes me think blank. Nice job with your sentence stem for inferential questions and character traits. All right, let's practice with some of our character traits. Today, I used some names from our scholars in DePaul and uh, use the scholar as well. So let's get ready. We're going to read together. That means when I read, you read. So we should be reading the words at the same time, just like we practice in school. Finger underneath the first word. We're reading on two, one, two. Zoe was always thinking of other people. She tried to do nice things like write kind notes, bring people gifts, and say nice things. What two, oh my goodness, what two character traits could describe Zoe? Ooh, okay. I'm going to go back into the text and look for my text evidence first. So what that means is I'm going to look and see what things in the text can help me answer this question. So, she was always thinking of other people. Oh my goodness, that line was not straight at all. Let's try that again. She was always thinking of other people. Okay, I tried my best. She was thinking of other people. Wow. 
that's pretty nice. She tried to do nice things like write notes. She brought gifts and she said nice things. So she was thinking of other people and she was doing nice things to other people. So what two character traits can describe Zoe? All right, let's see. Is Zoe A, nice and mean? Yes or no? Let me see your thumb. Is she nice and mean? No, she's not mean in this story. She's not being mean at all. Let's look at B. Is she thoughtful and nice? Ooh, thoughtful is one of those words that we learned when we were talking about Cinderella stories. Remember, when you're thoughtful, it means that you think of other people all the time. You want to be doing nice things and being thoughtful for the people around you. Do we think Zoe is being thoughtful in this story? Yeah, she's being thoughtful and she is being nice. So that's a maybe. Good job. Let's go to the last one. Kind and bossy. Do we think Zoe is being kind and bossy in this story? Yes or no? Yeah, she's not being bossy in this story. She is being kind. But remember, the question is asking us about two character traits. Whoa, you guys must almost be second graders. So our answer is B, thoughtful and nice. Zoe is thoughtful because she's thinking about the people, and she is nice because she does kind things for them, like write notes and say nice things. Raise your hands if you got answer B correct. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Give yourself a pat on the back. All right, let's go to number two. Jaden brought his, oh, scholars, I got to I want you to read this with me. Take your finger and put it underneath the word Jaden. I am reading and you are reading. That means your voice is on, reading all of the words. Try your very best. We're reading it together on two, one, two. Jaden brought his binder to school every single day. Wow, nice job, Jaden. He always remembered to do his homework and kept his desk at school nice and neat. Wow, so Jaden always brought his binder. He had a clean desk and he always did his homework. Okay, let's see what the question is asking. What character trait could describe Jaden? So we're answering, what is Jaden like? The question is, what is Jaden like? The question is, all right, let's see. Let's go ahead and highlight our text evidence first. All right, so he brought his binder to school every day. I'm so impressed by that. He always did his homework and he kept his desk nice and neat. Oh my goodness, this is an exemplar, exemplar scholar. That means, wow, he's doing a really great job. So let's see. Do you think Jaden is A, responsible, B, honest, C, brave, or D, quiet? I want you to pause the video. You can either press the pause button or the space bar. And I want you to tell me which answer is correct. A, B, C, or D. Pause your video and answer that question now. All right. Yes or no to responsible. All right, some people say yes. We're gonna put a maybe on that. Yes or no to honest. All right, we're gonna put a maybe on honest. Yes or no to brave? Is Jaden being brave in this story? Is he scared of something and is working through it? Not really. What about quiet? Does anything in this story tell us that Jaden is quiet? Not really to that one either. There's nothing in our story that tells us about Jaden being quiet. So what do we think? Is he more, does the story tell us that he is more responsible or more honest? Which character trait do you think is better for Jaden? Let's look back at our highlights for our text evidence. He brought his binder to school, he did his homework, and he kept his desk neat. So he is, he might be an honest scholar, but this story is telling us that Jaden is being responsible. He is keeping his desk clean, he's doing his homework, he's bringing his binder to school. That is called responsible, that is called. Now we should all know that one because that one's one of our core values and you guys all know how to be responsible. Nice job, if you got that one right, give yourself a round of applause. All right, excellent job. Let's go ahead and get started today with our book. Our book is called Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Ooh, show me connection if you've ever read this book. This is one of my favorite books, and it is such a fun book because we're going to talk a lot about different character traits that we see in this book with Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Remember, friends, when you get stuck on a word today, I want you to read through the word. You're going to Yes, you're going to read every single sound. You're going to read. All right, friends, let's go ahead and get started. I want you to pause your video, 
and read through these two pages now. Excellent reading, let's move on. Friends, pause your video and read these pages now. Pause your video and read through these two pages now. Nice job, keep going, you can do it. Pause your video and read through these two pages now. Ooh, our story is getting juicy. Friends, go ahead and pause your video and read through these two pages now. Good job, friends. Go ahead and pause your video and read through the last two pages now. Such good reading through the words. Raise your hand if you guessed on a word in this book. All right, I hope nobody guessed. Raise your hand if you made some words up in this book. Good, you are too smart to make words up, so I know that we're not guessing our words, but we're reading through them. Good job. All right, let's go ahead and start with some questions. First one, what character trait would you use? Oh, this is juicy, we're starting off juicy. What character trait would you use to describe Goldilocks on the first page? She goes to a house, she knocks on the door, and she walks inside. What character trait could you use to describe Goldilocks? Go ahead and pause your video and answer that question now. Okay, friends, I see that no one answered the door, so she walked right in. What do you call someone who might find something and might be, hmm, might want to know more about something? I almost gave you the answer. If you are someone who finds something and then might want to know more about something, you are probably very curious. Yes, just like that animal Curious George that we talked about in the past, he's a monkey who always is wondering about things and is always getting into trouble because he's curious about things. So this is just like Goldilocks. She found the house and she was curious about it. She wanted to learn more information about it. And so she walked in. Goldilocks is curious. Goldilocks is, Goldilocks is curious. Goldilocks is very, she's very curious. Very nice job. Which porridge was just right for Goldilocks? Pause your video and answer that question now. Which porridge was just right? Yes, the porridge from the small bowl is the porridge that was just right for Goldilocks, and so she ate it all. The porridge from the small bowl is the answer. Nice job. What was wrong with the big chair and the medium chair? Pause your video and tell me what was wrong with the big chair and what was wrong with the medium chair. Go ahead and do that now. In the text, I read that the big chair is too big and that the medium chair is too big. So the chairs were too big for Goldilocks. That came right from the text, nice job. Next question, why did the chair, the small chair, chair break? Why did the small chair break? Pause your video and answer that question now. In the story, I read that she sat in the small chair and then it broke. So that makes me think, oh, I'm getting ready to use my schema. If I sit in a chair that's small and it breaks, I'm probably too big for that chair. So in the story, I read that Goldilocks sat in a small chair and it broke. So that makes me think, that Goldilocks was too big for the chair. Goldilocks was too big for the chair. Nice job. Why did Goldilocks go upstairs to find a bed? Why did Goldilocks go upstairs to find a bed? Pause your video and answer that question now. In the story, I read that Goldilocks was sleepy. That's a character trait, she's sleepy. So she went upstairs looking for a bed. Good. So she was tired, and so Goldilocks went upstairs to lay down because she was sleepy. Very nice job. <laughs> Which bed did Goldilocks sleep in? Which bed did Goldilocks sleep in? Pause your video and answer that question now. In the story, I read that she laid in the small bed and it was just right. I also see that she said, Zzz, which makes me think that she is sleeping. Nice, so she slept in the small bed or the, the little bear's bed. 
how do the bears feel when they come home? How do the bears feel when they come home? I'll give you a hint. They look like this. Pause your video and answer that question now. In the story, I see that they did not like what they saw and that they look surprised. In the story, I read that the bears did not like what they saw. So that makes me think that they are surprised. They are they are very surprised that someone has been in their house when they weren't there. Good job. Next question. <laughs> How did the bears feel when they see the porridge in the chairs? How did the bears feel when they see the porridge and the chairs? Go ahead and pause your video and answer that question. Now, I want to push you to use a word different than surprise. Use a different word than surprise. Go ahead and answer that question now. In the story, I see that the bears have question marks. So they're wondering like, wait, what happened? So that makes me think that they are curious or they are confused and they are, they're confused by someone eating their porridge and someone breaking their chairs. They are surprised, but they are also very confused and they are very, it means they don't understand what's been happening in their house. Really, really nice job. <laughs> Why does Goldilocks, I'm going to highlight this for you. Why does Goldilocks say Shh, to the bears? Why does Goldilocks say Shh, to the bears? Go ahead and pause your video and answer that question now. In the story, I read that she's sleeping in the bed. So I know that she's sleeping. So that makes me think that she said shh because she wanted to sleep, right? When you say shh to someone, you probably want them to be quiet so you can sleep or watch something or do something else that you need to be quiet for. So in this story, I read that she's sleeping in the bed and says shh. So that makes me think that she wants, to, wants them to be quiet so that she can sleep. Excellent job with that inferential question. If you use that sentence stem, say, I can do it. I love it. All right, let's go into the last question. Why did Goldilocks never go back to the bear's house again? Why did Goldilocks never go back to the bear's house again? Pause your video and answer that question now. In the story, I read that Goldilocks never went to the home of the bear's house because she jumped out of bed. And I, so that makes me think that she is very scared or confused or surprised that the bears came home and were standing above her in the bed. So she never went back because she was scared of the bears and didn't want them to find her like they did the first time. So she was scared or surprised or confused. And it says in the text, Goliath never again went to the home of the three bears. Nice job. All right, my second grade question, my challenge question is, what would you do if you came across a house in the woods? What would you do if you came across a house in the woods like Goldilocks did? Pause your video and answer that question now. Hmm, okay, so everyone can have a different question for this one because this is an opinion. This is a, yeah, there's no right or wrong answer. If I came across a house in the woods, I don't think I would knock on the door and I don't think I would go inside. I think I might walk around it and look at it, look at the front yard, look at the backyard, and maybe see what's going on with the house. But I don't think I would go inside. Show me connection if you think you would knock on the door and go inside like Goldilocks. Ooh, some of us might go inside. Raise your hand if you think you wouldn't even go near the house. Raise your hand if you think you might do like Miss Rossi and just walk around and see what's going on with the house. All right, we got lots of different choices. Nice job with your extended question. Okay, I want you to know today and every single day, I am so proud of you for your work. I am so proud that your brain just got bigger. You just got to read a whole book with me and answer some questions. So really, really, really nice job. I'm so proud of you. Let's do a quick cheer. Let's do little engines. Okay, so remember, little engines goes like this. Little engines up. One, two. I think I can. I think I can. Choo, choo, I did it. All right, let's do little engines. Get ready, here we go. You gotta be quick. Little engines up. One, two. I think I can, I think I can. Choo, choo, I did it. Nice job. All right, I have a quick reminder. Thursday, four o'clock. 
we're doing our scavenger hunt Zoom party. Ooh, I can't tell you any more details than that, but get ready because we're going to go on a little scavenger hunt together. Okay, so Thursday at four. When is our Zoom party? Thursday at four. Good. Remind your parents, aunties, uncles, grandmas, grandpas, cousins, friends, whoever you need to remember, remind, because we want to see every single one of your faces there. It's going to be so much fun, okay? Keep doing your work. Don't forget to watch Miss Marsha's video, Miss Javdi's video, Miss Cherney's video today. If you have not, don't forget to do your 30 minutes of Zern and 30 minutes of Lexia today. And please find a book and read it. I love you, friends. Nice job. I'm so proud of you. See you next time.